Hello guys, uh, our name's Ed from 6++. This is the first of hopefully a fair few episodes of the Deep Dives. So today, by popular, popular opinion, we're going to be looking at the Anvil Siege Force. So these guys are effectively like the like Imperial Fist-esque sort of um, uh, detachment. So they've got some rules for heavy and they've got some rules for a lot of rules around remaining stationary. Now, uh, that can be, it can sound like that can, can be quite tough to use because, you know, the game revolves around moving on to objectives, taking objectives and all that sort of thing. But I do think that there's some tricks in there that will help you do that and make still make them viable in a competitive circumstance, depending on the list and the build and how you use that list. So on to episode one. So we're going to go on to the army rules first. The army rules is, is Oath of Moment. We, we know it. We love it. Um, this is full roster here for your entire army against a single target. Uh, obviously very powerful. Um, one of the main things that Space Marines um, have in every, every detachment, every army. Um, then we'll go on to the Shield of the Imperium. This gives your unit heavy if they've stood still. And uh, if you already have a heavy keyword, you get plus one to wound if you remain stationary. So a fair few applications of that um if but you have to build your list around it so that you can really utilize that to the maximum efficiency so uh so we're going to go to some standout units in this detachment that i quite like so eradicators this is probably quite clear because they've got heavy um so that means when they stand still they've got plus one to hit and plus one to wound and with the full rerolls against monsters and vehicles obviously very powerful so these guys are 95 points each i think they're fantastic and they're great in most of the most lists especially when they can come from strap reserve and get some pop some shots off um and they have some utilizer and, they, and, they, and it's hard to get to tag them in this detachment as well which i'll go on to later and we've got to heavy incessors these guys are tough on objectives so they suit this detachment pretty well so one or two units of these for some oc and just like uh, some objective control early on is pretty nice um I like them, but I think that you need to have some damage in the list. So I think they have a place if like they just go up a bit of damage, like two shots at strength five AP one one damage isn't enough, uh, even though they have some utility for being durable. And then we go on to aggressors. Aggressors are fantastic in the list, I think. Um, well, one unit with a minus Calgar. So I, I think this unit is very, very good. You see it a lot in the Vanguard detachment, um, obviously very good in that detachment as well and it's just it's just a very solid unit like you've got you've got it's a, it's a horde clearing unit so you you have the frag storm and the bolt uh, guns um which are twin linked and if you stand still they can get twos to hit so they are not too bad the overwatch is pretty good as well when they hit on, when they have lethals um and yeah they're just they're just very very solid uh, then we've gone to whirlwinds whirlwinds they're indirect they've got they're, they're good indirect the damage too um they'll be hitting on threes in this detachment um so yeah we we love whirlwinds that is in this detachment it means you can save some points on tech marines because they already get the heavy keyword um so yeah we like those and then we go on to um devastation marines desolation marines in this detachment i think are quite good because if you're against something that doesn't have a lot of indirect your indirect becomes very powerful because you suddenly hit on twos you can get plunging fire on them they get an ignores cover um and they can crit on fives so suddenly they become quite very quite good especially with the venger hitting on twos and they've got some super cracks if you want to use them as well so they are quite powerful then we go on to some enhancements so the enhancements are hit and miss i think i like i would like one and i think i would use one um and i'll go through what that is in a bit but let's go through what they all are for now so start off with the indomitable fury this is a gravis model only uh, first time the bear is destroyed, roll a d6 on a 2 plus, he stands back up as close as possible to where it was destroyed, out of engagement range with full wounds remaining. This has some applications. So, on a Gravis Captain, it's obviously quite good. You can get back up, you, you can be used again. Um, sort of, you know, protects him a little bit from precision. Um, but uh, the, re the real utility on this, I think, is on an Apothecary in a unit with some good combat like aggressors. Because it means if the, if the Apothecary is ever killed, you can bring him back. And if he, if he, if he can bring him back, and then he's just awkward again. So, but I think this is probably better on a Gravis captain, but I don't see it getting much use. Then we've got a fleet commander. This is like old school bombardment, but a little bit different. 
So once for battle, start the shooting phase, you can select um, one point on the battlefield and place an objective marker, uh, place a marker on it. Start the shooting phase, as, as place another obje- marker on the battlefield within 12 inches on the center of the first marker. Then draw a line between the two um, of each of these markers and roll D6 for each unit that line passes over or through on a 3 plus S8 D3 more wounds. It's 15 points, it's cute, it's cool, it's fluffy, but it's not. It's it's very hard to get this application. Because once the point's down, your opponent can sort of plan around it. And it, it's good for, I suppose it's good for trying to put things out of position sometimes. But apart from that, it's, it's not incredible. Moving on to Stoke Defender. This one I like. This is the one that I like, to be honest. So this is uh, Wally Bear, Wally Bear is leading unit. Models in that unit have a six plus feel of pain, uh, which on three wound models is pretty useful, especially when you've got the damage three firing at them. Uh, while in the range of objective marker, you control. And while that unit is bat- while that unit is battle shocked, half the objective control characteristic of models in that unit instead of change it to zero. So this is good fifteen points. So this is one. This is the this is normally on my apothecary in the minus Calgo unit with the aggressors. I think this is that's quite a solid unit because uh, they advance to shoot charge. They've got a six of fill in the pain. They've got the victory card in there with then the can armor of contempt to make them really awkward. So this unit is pretty good. Then we want to architect of war. So uh, this is a deck a deck my starters model only. While the bearer's leading unit, range weapons uh, equipped by the model, equipped by models in that unit have the ignores cover. This can be good. I think it's hard. To, I think it's an argument between the Stoic Defender and this normally on that unit of aggressive on, on that unit of aggressors because ignores cover can be rather good, especially with the lethals and crits on fives that you can sort of do on that unit as well. So I don't hate it, but it's it's pricey for twenty five points and. A lot of, and there's not lots of AP in that unit anyway, but AP1 ignores cover would be good into like the two up saves just to force them on a three up. But uh, normally it's a toss up between Stoic Defender and Architect of War for me. So there's the enhancements. Okay, so onto the stratagems. We've got Armor Contempt. Uh, we know it, we love it. It's uh, worse than the AP of the characteristic of that attack by one when it targets your unit in the shoot phase or fight phase. This is one CP, it is a battle tactic. Uh, this interacts with cover as well, which is pretty fantastic. So if you've got like uh, a unit with uh, two up save, armor of contempt and cover, suddenly you've AP two, you're still on two up saves. This interacts really well with the Victory Scarred in Marnius's unit. So this is really, really good. Um, but also it's just it's just something that if your opponent doesn't commit quite enough, you can armor of contempt, you can survive a little bit. And um, it's really good for making something just kill one model for a stratagem, which I'm going to talk about later on, which lets you shoot. So yeah, armor contempt is great. Um, it's it's one of the it's, it's one of the ones you see in every space green attachment. It's awesome. Moving on to rigid discipline. So this is end of fight phase. One unit within engagement range. Your uh, one one unit within engagement range, and your unit can immediately fall back of uh, make a fallback move up to six inches. Now this is like one of the best. This is one of the really good pieces of tech in this list because it lets you f- make a fallback move after the fight phase, which lets which might let you put more models on the os- on on the objective. Might let you fall back to be able to shoot and uh, ch- let you fall back, shoot and charge in your turn. Um, if they try and tag eradicators, you can use this stratagem to fall back and then shoot in your turn. It means that you get a lot more utility out of a few pieces in your list that you wouldn't uh, normally get. So this is pretty fantastic. I really, really like this stratagem. Um, and it's, it's stuff like you can, you can rearrange your unit when you fall back um, onto the objective. So you can, you know, put your apothecary on there if you units kill the unit in combat to get the OC9. All these little good little pieces, all these little tricks that you can do with this. And there's a lot of applications I probably haven't seen yet, but this stratagem, I think, is quite good. Then we're going to go on to no one backward, no, no, not one backward step. This is in your command phase. It's an adaptive start as infantry unit within range of an objective marker. Until the, until the end of the turn, double the OC characteristic of the models in that unit. However, it must remain stationary. This is a fantastic strat. So this is really, really good for um, like getting, getting, getting primary. So if you've got a unit that you can fall back and then uh, fall back in your in, in your enemy fight phase and then double the OC in your command phase, suddenly you can really be playing that kind of primary game really, really well. So uh, this, this, this is what this one does. And I quite like it because it interacts with the Apothecary's OC9 after the unit destroys something in combat. So my unit kills something in combat, the Apothecary goes to OC9. Then your command phase, you can put the Apothecary onto, uh, in your command phase, you can put the Apothecary up to OC18 on his own. So 
because it goes because his OC characteristic becomes nine, and then you double it. So it's really, really good. Obviously, it has to remain stationary, but the aggressive, the aggressive shooting is no joke. And if it remains stationary for a turn, you can use the sustained fives on there with lethals and sustained with a full unit of aggressive shooting with uh, AP1 towards the closest target. It becomes very, very good, quite potent, especially with Oath. Um, so yeah, that unit, so I think that's really, really good. Uh, also, it's just it's good for just like little pieces here and there, like if you want to double an infiltrator squad or something like that, where your opponent doesn't quite put enough or just like doesn't appreciate that how much OC you can get on an objective with this strap. Um, it can be very, very useful. And we're going to go on to no threat too great. Uh, this is one enemy unit, uh, one unit from your army that hasn't been selected to shoot this phase until the end of the phase. Each time model in that unit targets a monster or a vehicle, we roll the wound roll. This is very good and it's a battle tactic, but it is two CP. So this is one that you can use situationally um, with this I think uh, This army can be very CP hungry, which is why you'd want to build it around um, Marnius and that sort of thing as well. So this this stratagem is very, very good. Um, it's, it's something you can use on the aggressors as well if you really wanted to. Um, so if, I know the bulk storm have twin linked, but having full rerolls on all their shooting with uh, leaks with sustained and lethals on fives then the full re-rolls means you can actually lay down quite a bit of hurt onto a vehicle as well um you can also use it on the desolators for their cracks and all that sort of thing but this is this is all little situational stuff but um it's two cp you probably won't use it all too often but it is good when it comes into play then battle drill recall you're in your shooting phase one enemy well, one unit from your army that is has been set to shoot this phase until the end of the phase range weapon in your unit have sustained one um, and if your unit remains stationary, it gets critical fives to hit as well. This is one CP and it is a battle tactic. So this is this is very, very good. So you can basically get a whirlwind to hit on threes and critting on fives with sustained, uh, with, with oath if you wanted to. You could use it on desolators if you've got hordes from out of, uh, I've got like a horde out behind a wall. So really lay down some hurt from them. Um, you can use it on the aggressors if they fall back in your, the enemy fight phase and then double the OC and then shoot. This is three CP to do so, but a lot of which, but but it, it's it's a lot of damage and a lot of like you know tech that you can use on different pieces throughout your turn. Um, also very very good um, on the redemptor as well. So if it stands still, it gets heavy, so it's on twos, and then you can fish fish for fives with sustained full rerolls um, with its macroplasma and stuff like that. So it could do a lot of damage that way as well. So this strat does have a lot of applications. So I do think it's very very good um and yeah it just spikes your damage output on a few units that are really really key um and then you've got hail of vengeance your opponent's shooting phase just after enemy unit has resolved its attacks one unit from your army that has um, had one or more uh, models destroyed in your in the shooting phase the unit can shoot as if it were your shooting phase however must only target enemy unit well that enemy unit while doing so so this is very very good but it is 2 cp and again the army is very cp hungry because you've got a lot of good strats here so you probably won't be using this all too often. But if you do use it in the situation where the aggressors, they shoot an aggressor squad, might only kill one Victrix Guard, let's say, and the unit is, in, is within range, that unit will do a fair number on something that shoots it. So um, with the amount of shots that it can have, it's it's pretty good. Um, and it shoots as if it's the shooting phase as well. So you've got, so you, so you can use your, you can use your lethals from the, apothecary as well uh, it's basically something that you can use to try and take out a piece if they're using multiple pieces to try and damage that squad um whilst they are there so it can make it more awkward to try and take a primary and all that sort of stuff and they can overwatch they can overwatch and then do this if you have three cp of course but hence why it's cp hungry but you can make it quite awkward for people to try and take out this unit for sure um and then we'll go on to uh hail of Ven so yeah then see so that's, that's hail of vengeance so that's great and then we'll go on to an example list and tactica so this is a list that i've written up i quite like it i think it has a fair few tricks i think it has some really really cool applications um so yeah we're going to start with minus kalgar he has his two vitrix guard he's got a decent shoot attack he's got some damage three attacks in there as well he will be the warlord he'll be going into the aggressive squad and you've got an apothecary biologus. Oh, sorry. Minus, the only reason why you have minus is the CP uh, regen, the CP generation and the advanced shoot and charge on the aggressors is super good. It expands their threat range a lot more. Your opponents have to appreciate them a lot more, um, and it gets them into the fray a bit quicker. Um, then we have apothecary biologus with stoic defender. This is the six at field of pain enhancement that we mentioned earlier. So this 
uh, guy gives lethal hits to the unit, and if the opponent, if your unit destroys um, a unit, then you go up to OC nine, uh, and it gives six of filling pain. And if you uh, get battle shocked, your OC goes to one, not zero. So yeah, he's, he's a good he's a good piece. Um, he's mainly there for the primary uh, manipulation and all that sort of thing. So he's really really good like that. Um, and the lethal hits uh, with and the lethal hits interacting with the critical hits on fives with sustained on the aggressors can make them a real powerhouse of shooting. Um, then we have a co lieutenant with combo weapon. Rear ones to wound on an objective is always tasty. Um, he's a lone op. Uh, he can move when he move, move when be move, move within range of. He has a combi weapon. He's good for seventy points. He's, he's a good piece. Um, he's mainly there because you just need a lone op somewhere to screen out a part of the board. Then you have um, six aggressors with bolt storm grommets of Phallic storm and the fists. These guys go with Marnius. As I say, they're fantastic. Their shooting's really good. They've got blast. They can take out um, large pieces. Their Overwatch is pretty solid as well. Um, so yeah, I like them. And the advanced and shooting charge is also very good as well. And that unit also interacts with the uh, like with destroying a model and you shoot back because you can do so a fair amount of damage with that. Then we have a desolation squad with uh, super cracks and Avenger. So this squad has the castle and launchers as well. So this unit, whilst on a top floor using the castle and the Venga with sustained fives, if you have no targets first turn, can also be very tasty. Because uh, with Oath, these guys will get a decent amount of hits because they'll be hitting on twos. Or if your opponent has indirect that you're worried about getting shot by, you'll be in the uh, in Impulsor with heavy anyway. So be hitting on threes. Um, but yeah, they're very, very good. Um, then we're on to three units of three eradicators. These guys interact with the the entire dynamic of this list really really well um because they have heavy so that means if they get if they stand still they get a plus one to wound uh, and they'd be hit on twos which is obviously fantastic or threes on the multi melter um and these guys these guys mainly they can act independent of oath depending on the targets that they're shooting at so they can if they're targeting a monster or vehicle they get a four rolls to hit four rolls to win four rolls to damage so it also saves you um uh, oathing one target. It's, it's it's all about having these little pieces that lets your oath target other pieces. And um, and it's hard to tag them because if you tag a unit of these aggressors, they can fall back five inches, um, and then just shoot the unit. So they are very very good. Um, then we're on to an infiltrator squad. I feel like this is pretty standard in most space marine units. Uh, I suppose most space marine armies, just because the twelve inch deep strike denial is so useful, especially in an uh, especially in a mare with hyper crypt and uh, gray knights running around and three inch deep strikes uh, everywhere so i feel like this that unit is very solid um another option for this is you could put a phobus libby in there as well so that's an option that i see a few people do um but personally i don't think you needed it in this list um then you have a redemptive dreadnought this is just a solid piece that sits there you can arm and contempt it it's minus one damage its shooting is very good especially with the sustained fives if it sits still um so the redemptive is very very good and then we have and also it gives some ap to the list that you don't really have otherwise so the plasma has enough AP to shoot to get through Terminator uh, armor to put them on their invuns um, and to do damage that way. Because otherwise, you do start to struggle to chip through that stuff. Okay, then we are on to the uh, three units of scouts. These are very, very standard. Like they're very, very good. You got shotguns in there so they can advance to do actions. You've got a sniper and a missile launcher so you can do some damage if you really if, if you get a bit lucky or you're good. They're a grenade piece. They're an action monkey. Um, they can do deploy, they can do um, behind enemy lines, they can get picked up at the end of each turn. They're fantastic. Um, and then we've got two whirlwinds. This is just for some solid indirect to sort of do damage out of line of sight and utilize that heavy. So they're hitting on threes, they can sustain on fives. So they are pretty good that way. Um, and uh, they're just good at holding the backfield as well. And it's two hunter killers and it gives you some access to tank shock if you need to. And the impulsor, this, this thing exists just to keep the, the, the um, desolate is safe if they if you if your opponent has some indirect so that if your opponent wants to kill an impulse from out of line of sight it does take a bit of effort um and the desolators can start to shoot from out of line of sight anyway so they are pretty good um that's the entire list uh the tactics of this sort of list and the way you should sort of looking at being using this is doing a lot of like objective uh, a lot of uh, objective control so you want to be denying your opponent's primary uh, holding your primary yourself doing damage from out of line of sight and mainly mainly with this list i think you're looking at killing their screens so you actually have a fair few scoring pieces here you've got the lieutenant three of scouts you've got an impulsor that can go in and do um deploy your actions and all that sort of thing so you do have a fair few pieces here 
So what I would do a fair few pieces for having a desolation squad and an aggressor squad. Um, so what I would probably look at doing is trying to kill your opponent's scoring pieces because they probably have more than you to start. So you kill all your opponent's scoring pieces and then use yours to outscore them and then use and then sort of bully the primary by using your aggressor squad, um, using your redemptor's damage and doing out of line of sight damage as well. So that's the list and that's the way I would use it. And that's my take on this detachment. I think this attachment has some play. I think it can. Ha I think this list could do well um, if you if it hits the if it hits the right bearings. So you don't hit something that's too ho horrible. You could probably do well with it at a tournament. And um, yeah, so this is this is the end of episode one. This is my first take on the deep dive, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I've got uh, the next episode will be Gladius Task Force, um, which I'm going to be covering a list that I haven't written, but someone else has written. So I've got an idea for that one. And so that's the example list for Gladys Task Force. And uh, thanks very much, guys. It's always it's always a pleasure to do this. And um, yeah, thanks, guys. See you next time.